imitate you seven times, don't you? Mm -hmm. You, if you ain't with nobody, how anybody ever did anything to you for you to even be tested? People be praying. I want to be more patient. You know, I, I mean, I, I really need patience. I read the scripture, patience. The Lord, like you, you want that, and you prayed last night for it. You know what's gonna happen the next day? You're Some be right. situations that's gonna make you impatient, so that your patience can be grown. This is how we have to look at life. Our wrestle is not against flesh and blood. So the brother who did them, that who did two things that make you mad in one week, Adam, and you had to rebuke him both times, and he actually forgave him both times. You're not wrestling against him. You are wrestling against spiritual wickedness, not in high prices, not this time, but in high places. So, brothers and sisters, we are being asked something that is not us. This is not unto man. And when Joseph had it, he did not do something that was just of himself. He did what God put in him. And remember what his brother said? They said, please forgive us because we are God's service. Ain't that what they said to him? In Genesis 50, they told him, we serve, we are, the serve, for, please forgive us the servants of God. You not willing to forgive the servants of God who are still flesh and are still fighting the, with their, their infirmities? This is what our master has taught, and he had it within himself. Um, 1 John 1. You don't think so? Look at what the apostle who he loved knew. 1 John 1. 1 John 1, and when you get there, brother, we're just going to read verse 9. First John 1 and 9. Yes. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh-huh. See, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive it us and cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Our job is just not to keep making ourselves dirty. That is our fight. We don't want to continue to make ourselves dirty. Joseph brothers didn't do it to him again, did they? Stole him out of Egypt and then sold him into Arabia now or something like that, didn't they? They didn't want to do that to him no more. We, when we do things, I understand the frustration because I'm flesh along with everybody in here. But what being asked of us got to go pr past our flesh. And this is what the apostle mean by pressing toward the high calling of the mark of Jesus Christ. This is a high calling and everybody ain't fit for it. But if you ain't fit for it, then you fit for the furnace. What's the alternative? The alternative is the furnace. Let us go to let us go to Luke 23. Luke 23 and read verse 33 and 34. Luke 23 verse 33 and 34. Now let's just see if that was just talk. Oh, I'm in heaven now and I can't be touched, so I'm, I can forget. Let's see what he did in his flesh. Go ahead. Luke 23 and 33. Yes, sir. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, they crucified him. They did what? They crucified him. Continue. And the male fact is one on the right hand and one on the left hand, and one on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. Mm, so, what did he say? Right in the midst of them doing what they're doing. Now, they didn't ask forgiveness. But what did he say? Forgive them. Father, forgive them. They do not really understand the magnitude of what they're doing. And sometimes wickedness is so heavy in the flesh that it really don't even understand how to fight it. But if you understand what the flesh is going through, then you're supposed to have hope for the individual. This is why you have to forgive. Our Messiah on the stake, those who had pierced him, those who were saying, yeah, yeah, and making fun and spitting at him and all of that, throwing rocks at him as he go through the crowd, the whole nine, he asked the Lord, forgive them because they don't really understand what they are doing. That right there, yeah, increase my faith. The kid might be picking up rocks, throwing them back if I got some strength. Because he is something that I strive to be. 
in everything that I have never been. So this is the high calling of the mark, and we see how Joseph and his story, this is why we ask people to be around for the law readings. Some people would be like, ah, uh, but yo, it is so much you can learn through reading that law repetitively. As you get into the spirit of things, as the Messiah reveals stuff, and you be like, yo, remembering Joseph, remembering this story, remembering that, man, I see the spirit of Christ here. I see it there. I see it here. I see it there. That's really what this lesson was about. It was about seeing the spirit of, of Christ, and how could anyone be so foolish as to say, we ain't got to deal with that old book no more. Go ahead, brother. We're going to move on now. Let us go over to the book of Romans, chapter 8, and verse 28. Romans 8, verse 28. So I hope that this is inspiring the spirit, hopefully, of God in all of us. That, yo, we got to fight. We act, pray and ask him to increase our faith. And let us desire to be around one another so that we can perfect the tools. I need to, I, some, somebody in here got to do something to irritate me. And you won't be doing it just because you pre-meditating it. I hope not. But it's just going to be incidences and situations. I might say something to irritate the crap out of one of y'all. I actually did a trespass. What you going to do in that moment when you come to me and let it be known how you felt, this and that. And when I'm a, am I going to repent or am I going to justify myself? And then what, And if I repent and be like, man, you know what, man? Yeah, that, that was whack, man. I'm sorry. What's your next move? And vice versa, what's my next move if the shoe is on the other foot? This is what this is all about because we have to strive to be as our master is. Y'all know I'm a Kung Fu lover. And there isn't one student who don't strive to be like his master who when he finish don't look just like his master. The moves, everything, the katas, the, 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 the death blow, the power, the speed, everything mimics the master, don't it? Mm -hmm. And when the master die, one of his students who he's been training all this time, he'll have them spar against each other to see which one is more fit to take over in his position, right? So when Christ say, let us be in this world as our master was, what do that mean? We got to be just like him. We are asking him to teach us to be just like him. And that's why we are not to forsake the assembling of the brethren. Go ahead, brother, and read that. Luke, I mean, uh, Romans 8, in that one verse, verse 28. Mm -hmm. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Do you see that? All things work together for good to them that love God, and who are called according to his purpose. Joseph was called according to his purpose, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Even the Messiah coming forth in the flesh. He understood, I actually have to die for everyone. He even taught his disciples about his death and they didn't want to hear it. Like, no, ain't nobody going to do nothing to you. He was like, this is the whole reason I came. Joseph understood, yeah, y'all thought evil against me, but I understand through the wisdom of the Most High that he meant it for what? For good. Ain't that what it said? Mm -hmm. Ain't that what it said in Genesis 49? Yes. So brothers and sisters, everything that has happened, the reason why the Messiah would say forgive him, because he understood that he was brought forth to die for those who was cheering for his death. Joseph understood he was had to be sold in order to save those who really wanted to kill him. So why are we not forgiving one another? Why aren't we having mercy on one another? Why we don't speak about this to each other and remind each other to love each other? Remind each other that pray for that our faith be increased, that we can forgive each other, even in some of the most hard and difficult situations with each other. So you understand what's happening? Just like there was something that was meant to happen. Brothers and sisters, everybody here, we all here because we was predestinated to be here at this moment, and to hear what's being said right now. To be taught was being said. It ain't no coincidence. Like what happened with Joseph ain't no coincidence. Like what happened with Christ ain't no coincidence. And we read in this word, right? But remember, this some of these words was penned about 2,000 years ago. So when it was written, we come in 2,000 years after it. So if we read in it now, guess what? It was predetermined that we was going to deal with it. So now, let us go to our next text. Let us go to Romans 9, verse 9. Next chapter over, verse 9. I'm telling you, this word is so perfect that, man, <laughs> I just love this stuff. 